Hello, my name is David Saucedo and today I'm going to talk a little bit about the inventory management or inventory system. Uh, but first of all, uh, I would like to uh, start with a small definition just to have a better understanding of this topic. This definition says an inventory system gives service to several functions inside the company. They offer flexibility to operations. Some of the objectives are number one, separate the everything in smaller and easy parts. Number two, protect the company from demand variations. Number three, take advantage of discounts for big amounts of purchasing. Number four, and the last one, protect the company for, from product price increasing. Uh, like I said before, this was just a small definition, but uh, during this course, uh, during the production management subject, I did uh, a little essay about, uh, well, talking about the inventory management, and I would like to read it to you. And <clears throat> it starts. Um, the key of a successful company or any kind of organization lies on its awareness of the elements like raw material or finished products that has available. An inventory system can be an excellent tool in order to make proper decisions regarding to your business. This kind of system has the task of bringing you the type of data such as location, quantity, and demand of your items in order to see the whole spectrum of your company and the decisions you'll make. The main purpose of adopting this kind of inventory management is to match your company's demand with its resources. This means to satisfy the expectations of your client without having an inventory glut as well. Nowadays, many businesses are including this tool to their operations because, as we all know, the full awareness of our procedures will make us to bring the right choices to the table. As we can see, it is elementary to keep track of all the information regarding to the raw material and also the final products. If we follow this system and let ourselves to be led by it, we will save a lot of money and avoid bad experiences radically. This is a very simple way of keeping organized any kind of process that you are in. So, as we should already know, there are no excuses to be great at anything you are doing. Well, this was uh, my essay. And now I would like to begin with the presentation I made for you. All right, uh, learning objectives. The first one, it says, uh, define the term inventory and list the major reasons for holding inventories and list the main requirements for effective inventory management. Number two, discuss the nature and importance of service inventories. Number three, discuss periodic and perpetual review systems. Number four, discuss the objectives of inventory management. And number five, describe the ABC approach and explain how it is useful. Well, as you can see, this is the main objectives of this uh, presentation that hopefully you will learn during this, uh, well, we can call it class. Uh, next slide. Describe the basic EOQ model and its assumptions and solve typical problems. Then describe the economic production quantity model and solve typical problems. Describe the quantity model and solve typical problems. Describe reorder point models and solve typical problems. And finally, describe situations in which the single period model will be appropriate and solve typical problems. Well, <laughs> this 
this will be a very complete uh, presentation now let's see uh, well the inventory what it is and what is uh, like the main organization like in this graphic organizer uh, first we have that inventory is a stock or st or store of goods well yes is to uh, save your elements your raw material and in the first place we have the independent demand and in the second one we have the dependent demand independent demand is, is uncertain the dependent demand is certain inventory models uh, independent demand finished goods items that are ready to be sold that are ready to be sold uh, the example is a computer then we have the dependent demand the components of finished products example parts that make up the computer yes with that example we we should have a better understanding because it's very clear for example in the independent demand it's like uh, the whole product the the complete product for example well in this one a computer or it could be also a car and in the dependent demand we have the parts that make up the computer or the parts that make up uh, the so-called car types on inventories the first one the type of inventory that storage the raw materials and purchased parts like the elements you will use in order to process them and then making them something else the second one it says uh, the partially completed goods called work in progress well in, this should be like the second stage of this uh, process in which the inputs are the raw materials and the process parts and in this part it will be like the the whole process like all the changes that these uh, elements will have to face in order to become uh, something else and then we have uh, the type that is for finished goods inventories like uh, manufacturing firms or merchandise retail stores this is the type of inventories that you will uh, use in order to storage your uh, final products like for example you have your raw materials like for example the raw materials to make a to make a computer and then this will be the first type and the second type it will be like the partially completed goods for example like uh, um your computer but it's not uh it's not done it's not completed and then the third type it will be like the storage of those computers of those already completed uh, computers types of inventories replacement parts tools and supplies goods in transit to warehouses or customers like uh, we can see in that row is the goods in transit that will transport the such goods to the warehouses or directly to your clients or customers <clears throat> now let's see some of the functions of inventory the first one it says to meet anticipated demand the second one to smooth production requirements and the third one to decouple operations the fourth one to protect against stock outs to take advantage of order cycles to help hedge against price increases to permit operations 
to take advantage of quantity discounts. Now let's see uh, a little bit a, a small definition of what is the inventory turnover. It says that it's the ratio of average cost of goods sold to the average inventory investment. Now, without small definition, let's see the other part that says to achieve satisfactory levels of customer service while keeping inventory costs within reasonable bounds. Then, level of customer service. And finally, cost of ordering and carrying inventory. Effective inventory management. Let's see some of the steps to do uh, uh, a good one, uh, an effective one, like it says in the title. Uh, the first uh, point, it will be a system to keep track of inventory. The second one, a reliable forecast of demand, like we saw on the first unit of this quarter. Then, knowledge of lead times. And reasonable estimates of holding cost, ordering cost, and shortage cost. And finally, we have a classification system. Inventory counting systems. The first one is periodic system. This is a physical count of items made at periodic intervals. The second one, perpetual inventory system. System that keeps track of removals from inventory continuously through monitoring current levels of each item. Uh, the first one, uh, it means like, for example, uh, like the old fashioned way to do things, to count them physically and make it uh, like uh, from a certain, like for example, you made it every week or every month, like uh, it's periodic. And in the second one, the perpetual inventory system, it's, it could be like a software or, or any kind of system really that keeps track of removals. Uh, this means like uh, if this system, if it's a software or any kind, if it's effective, it will tell you when it's necessary to, uh, to buy some more of the elements that that you keep in storage. This 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 is the uh, the small definition. Now the inventory counting systems. Let's continue with this topic. Uh, we have the two bin system, uh, which is two containers of, in of inventory recorded when the first is empty. Reorder. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, this this is an well, like I said, it's this is also like an old-fashioned way to do things because it's very mechanical, very physically, but um, effective, anyways. Uh, in this one, you will have two containers, and when one of them is empty, you will uh, you will reorder you know with the second one why that is the reason for <laughs> for keeping two containers and then we have the universal barcode the barcode printed on a label that has information about the item to which it is attached this is very common to see in any kind of company uh, we can see an example in this image uh, it's very it's it's very easy to use and how can I say very comfortable because um, it will be like a system di I don't know how to say like uh, in a software digitally and yeah every company do it that way and it should be it should be like a reason for it. 
and then we have the key inventory terms the first one lead time time interval between ordering and receiving the order the second one holding carrying cost cost to carry an item in inventory for a length of time usually a year ordering cost cost of ordering and receiving inventory shortage cost cost when demand exceeds supply well let's see a little bit more deeply about each one the first one lead time is the time that will take uh, is it time that from since it was ordered until uh, the customer uh, or in this case you will receive that that order then we have the the cost of carrying the carrying cost it is the the cost to carry an item in inventory for a length of time this is the price the cost that will uh, that, that will happen to you if uh, to to hold a, a certain item for a certain amount of time then we have the ordering cost which is uh, the the cost of ordering and receiving inventory it, this is very simple like the definition says so this doesn't need a further explanation and the last one the shortage cost is uh, is kind of like a, like a ticket like for example when you exceed um, like for, for example la, like the your demand is is really big and you don't have like the enough uh, raw materials or or well the money to work on it that's what shortage cost uh, means now we have the ABC classification system uh, the definition says uh, classifying inventory according to some measure of importance and allocating control efforts accordingly uh, we have the um, like the classification uh, first one we have a which is very important then B uh, moderate and important and C less important we have like uh, in the corner a little graph to uh, have a, a well a better understanding we have like I said the A which is high the B that is the um, annual value of items and then low well no uh, the, this part it will be the annual uh, value of items in dollars which is from high to low and then in the lower part we have the percentage of, of items which is also from low to high uh, another on our system is the cycle counting <clears throat> this is a physical count of items in inventory cycle counting management the first point is how much ac accuracy is needed uh, second one when should cycle counting be performed and the third one is who should do it who should do it economic order quantity models the first one is the economic order quantity EOQ model which is the order size that minimizes sizes total annual cost the second one is the economic production model and the third one is the quantity discount model assumptions of EOQ model the first assumption is only one product is involved the second one is annual demand requirements known demand is even throughout the year lead time does not vary each order is received in a single delivery 
Nice. There are no quantity discounts. Uh, this is a, an example of a graph of a uh, new inventory cycle to have a, a well a clear idea of what this is about. Uh, let's see it for a few seconds and then we should move on. Now we have the total cost. We have a, a, a little formula here of a total cost which is total cost is equal to the annual carrying cost plus the annual ordering cost. Uh, this is the simplified way in the below that one, so you can understand it better. Then we have the cost minimization goal. This is uh, also a graph. We shall see it for a few seconds. And here we can see our formula, the previous formula, uh, put to action. Nice. Deriving the EOQ. Using calculus, we take the derivative of the total cost function and set the derivative, oh, the, that's, that means the slope, and equal to zero and solve for q. We have the another formula. Uh, let's see it. Well, I should read it. Q of pt is equal to the square root of two times the annual demand time order of set of cost, all of this over the annual holding cost. Nice. That will be the explanation of this formula, the QOPT. Now we have the minimum total cost. The total cost curve reaches its minimum where the carrying and ordering cost are equal. This is like a principle, uh, kind of kind of like a law. So we shall follow these kind of rules. The economic production quantity, EPQ. Production done in batches, in batches or lots. Capacity to produce a part exceeds the parts usage or demand rate. Assumptions of EPQ are similar to EOQ except orders are received incrementally during production. Only one item is involved. Annual demand is known. Usage rate is constant. Usage occurs continually. Production rate is constant. Lead time does not vary. No quantity discounts. Uh, all these points are part of the assumptions of the economic production quantity or EPQ. So you don't get confused. <laughs> now let's see the economic round size, which we have another formula. Now let's see it. the total cost with purchasing cost. We have uh, the formula, which is uh, let's represent it with TC. TC is equal to the annual carrying plus cost, annual carrying cost, sorry, plus annual ordering cost plus purchasing cost. And in the lower part, we have the same uh, kind of formula but simplified. Now we have an example of the total cost with PD but in a graph to see it visually uh, we have the adding processing cost doesn't change in the EOQ doesn't change that uh, we have TC with PD, TC without PD and the PD, the PD is the, is the first line uh, well, or the last one, it depends the straight line, so you don't get confused. And the 
that arrows uh, represent the quantity. Another graph. Let's see it for a few seconds. Let's analyze it. Nice. When to reorder the EOQ ordering? Let's see. Reorder point. When the quantity on hand of an item drops to this amount, uh, the item is reordered. Well, that's the first uh, principle. The second one is the safety stock, which is the stock that is held in excess of expected demand due to parabola demand rate and or lead time. This is the second condition to uh, reorder the EOQ. And the third one is the service level. That is the probability that demand will not exceed supply during lead time. Determinants of the reorder point. The first determinant is the rate of demand. The second one, the lead time. The third one, demand and or lead time variability. And the fourth one, the stock out risk. It means the safety stock. Now let's see that one, the safety stock, but in a graph. So let's explain it. As we can see, we have the two variables, the quantity and then the time. And in the first line, it says maximum probable demand during lead time. And the second one, expected demand during lead time. Nice. Safety stock reduces risk of stock out during lead time. That's a little point. And a graph of the reorder point. Let's see it for a few seconds. The real P based on a normal distribution of lead time demand. Fixed order interval model. Orders that are placed at fixed time intervals. Order quantity for next interval. Suppliers might encourage fixed intervals. May require only periodic checks of inventory levels. Well, we can still uh, continue with this presentation, but as you, you can already notice, this is a very long, um, well, uh, as you can see, um, I'm, I'm a little bit, uh, well, I don't have like all the explanation because we didn't have time to cover that uh, during the course or during this uh, quarter, essentially. But I would like to finish with uh, a few uh, points uh, that I have learned during the during this investigation, really. Uh, for example, uh, the first time that I have learned is that is is key is key for any uh, company any business any any type of operation it, it could be even personal that you keep track of your elements that you have available uh, because the more you know the more you are in charge of your own decisions and um, well like you you well, like it's commonly known, knowledge is power, and we should um, take that into into our into account. Really, um, this will be my conclusion. Always keep track. Always be aware. Always, always, uh, you will always need uh, like the whole spectrum, all the data that any kind of operation. Uh, requires because the more you know the more uh, suitable you will be for uh, to take a, any kind of decision any kind of choice the more information you have uh, you will have really more power I think 
because uh, it's uh, it's very hard to uh, lose an opportunity or to make a mistake when you have all the information all the control of all your in this case inventory but it could be applied to anything so this will be my conclusion i hope you enjoyed uh, part <laughs> really of this presentation but like i said it was it was very long to complete it and uh, this will be all uh, like i said my name my name is david Sabcel and i'm here to help thank you